Join the Fishing NZ team as we travel to the beautiful South Island township of Kaikoura and discover the amazing variety of fishing and diving options. World famous for its crayfish and whale watching, Kaikoura may just be the seafood capital of New Zealand. See what we catch when we plumb the depths of the ocean using electric reels and super braid lines. I'm in a beautiful sunny Kaikoura, home of the crayfish, home of whale watching. But Kaikoura has a lot more to offer than just exceptional crayfish and exceptional whale watching. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you some of the options that Kaikoura has to offer. And I tell you what, there's a lot of them. You've got the potential for good trout fishing. They actually catch lots of salmon off the beach, something they don't tell you a lot about. There's great surf casting, which we're doing now. And we'll go out in a boat with one of the charter boats later on and check out some of the bottom fishing. So stay with us as we explore Kaikoura. We've come out with Sean Ford, who's a local power diver and a real keen surf angler. Now, I have to say, Sean has probably got one of the oldest surf rods I've ever seen and reels. It's a, a bamboo rod and it's a, an old German reel that's probably 50 years old. But I tell you what, it's in immaculate condition. And the interesting thing, even though it's old gear, it's well looked after, it's well maintained and it works well. So it works well for Sean. So Sean, beautiful beach, we've already seen porpoise going up and down, we've seen the planes and the parachutes. What do you normally target out here? Oh, mainly uh, rig is our main source, just because it's good eating, but occasional grey boy and gurnard, catch your gurnard oh, here. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, skates and conger eels, but we normally let that sort of fish go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing told, wrong with a skate to eat though. Been told it's good eating, they reckon it's like a scallop. Yeah. They reckon yeah. eat, but can't sell so actually. Uh, Oh, when you've got go such yet. good seafood out here, you can afford to be fussy, yeah, can't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. The shingle beach looked very fishy. We had already seen some kawai working in the waves when we arrived, so I was really keen to get a line in the water. And when in Kaikoura, the only bait to use is crayfish. OK, when you're surf fishing, one of the most important things is to make sure that your bait stays on once you cast it. And when you're using a really, really soft bait like crayfish tail or tua tua or anything like that, the trick is to bind it on with some bait cotton. And Black Magic put out a nice little bait cotton and it's very, very fine and flossy. So it makes it easy to bind your bait on. And use heaps and heaps of it because when you're fishing for things like rig and mokey, they won't feel the soft cotton and your bait will stay on your hook so you've got a much better chance of getting a fish. Well, I was talking to Sean, and uh, unbeknown to me, there's actually a few snags out here, and I got hooked up on the snag. I thought I had a real big fish, but I've managed to pull whatever was there off the snag, and it's just coming in now. Oh, yeah? Nice. There we go. Nice little moki. This one's uh, not a big one, so we'll probably let him go. But still fun fish in the surf. So I think the legal limit for blue mokey is about 40 centimetres. This one's probably legal, but uh, we're after actually rig or dogfish, which is probably better eating. So we'll let this one go and see if we can't get a rig. Well, there's something quite grassrootsy about, you know, surf fishing and beautiful conditions and, you know, seeing Sean just rip a kawai out of the surf on a spinner, you know, that, that's real down home fishing, but I tell you what, it's probably some of the best fishing you'll ever do. The rig we're using for our surf fishing is I've got a five ounce breakout sinker, and a breakout sinker looks like this, it's got wires on it, and when you cast it out, it hooks into the gravel or the sand, and when you pull it, it breaks out. 
so that you can pull it in without being snagged. And these are pretty much essential for surf fishing for two reasons. Firstly, they hold your line out so the waves don't drag it in, and they really do control your bait in the water so it doesn't get washed up and down the beach. Then we've got some 60 pound black magic fluorocarbon, a three way swivel, a branch trace, and a four burrow wasabi hook. And obviously, we're using crayfish tail for bait, which is working really well. Sean's nailed something on the, uh, the antique bamboo rod. It's almost bending it. Nasty spike on his tail. Yeah. Skater like stingrays and pretty tough on the end of a line. You can tell the difference by the skate's pointy nose. In Europe, skate wings are considered a delicacy to eat, but Sean was happy to let this one go. Well, the crayfish tail seems to be the bait that's working. I'm uh, into my next fish. It's just pulling me around in the surf here. It's going quite good. So that's another blue mokey. Again, probably a legal fish, but um, we won't keep it. We've got some kawai and um, other fish already. Coming up, we head out with a local charter boat skipper and the boys go for a quick dive. Well, we're just leaving dock from Kaikoura here. We're coming out on Seamus Charters with the skipper Pete and we're going to go to one of his uh, fishing spots. We've just run a couple of lines out the back with some simple trolling lures on. Um, ideally what we're going to do is catch some barracuda for bait. Because Kaikoura is, is probably one of the closest places in New Zealand to the edge of the continental shelf. So in places the water goes to over a mile deep uh, within a mile from shore. And you get these big currents hitting, hitting this big upwelling and it creates a lot of food. That's why you get all the whales and that's, that's what makes Kaikoura such a fishy place. We're just rigging up with some groper grabbers and uh, hopefully we put a couple of slabs of barracuda and nail some groper. No time at all to catch enough cooter for bait and we were soon dropping our lines into one of the local groper spots. Now I've got something interesting to tell you. Have a look at this reel here. This is a Daiwa electric reel. Now before you all say I'm going soft and send me some hardened up pills, with modern braid and everything, the depths of water that we're fishing for deep water fishing, electric reels make a lot of sense because they you know, if, if you're not fit or you have a, you know, you're not able to wind uh, from two, three, four hundred metres, an electric reel will make it possible for you. So someone who's um, maybe wants to get out and do some groper fishing but doesn't have the ability, with an electric reel you can do it. You can also use them for things like kite fishing and all sorts of different things. But we're fishing in some fairly deep water here and I'm unashamedly going to fish with an electric reel. I'll tip the bottom. Okay, so I've uh, hooked up on something here. Uh, hopefully it's a um, grover. That's the target for the day. And uh, it's the first time I've used electric reels, so uh, quite a different sensation to what I'm used to. Now I've got my bait to the bottom, and it's just bouncing along the reef. And because I'm using the um, Harpoka recurve hooks, I'm going to let the weight come on before I uh, engage the electric reel. So I'm just waiting for a full solid hookup. Let the fish hook themselves and then start winding them in.
Pete Spot started producing small groper straight away. Start. I've got a little something on here, I don't know what it is, I don't, it's not very big whatever it is, but it's coming in. With these electric reels you still got to set your drag and everything and if a fish falls hard enough it will let line go, you can't just winch them and it's not a winch. But this one's hardly bending the rod. The reel stops about five metres from the surface and you uh, wind it manually. And what have we got here? Oh, it is a very small groper. What they know in the trade is a pup, a little fella. The fishing was fantastic with all the crew catching a feed in a couple of hours. Along with groper, we caught big blue cod and a variety of bottom fish. You just never know what's going to come up off the bottom in Kaikoura. You know, we're fishing at the groper spot. We suspected there was a few sea purge down there but uh, the skipper got a nice sea perch and a nice blue cod. It's a different fish every time we drop a line down. Kaikoura for a dive today and we're diving off a seal colony. It's not always the best place to dive but I'm pretty confident it should be okay here. I've got a mate with me, Sean, who's only done a lot of scuba diving, hasn't done much free diving, done no spear fishing. So we're going to give it a go and see if we can give Sean a few pointers to get his first fish, maybe a butter or a blue mochi in place like Kaikoura. And also there's a chance there might be a cray or a power, because that's what Kaikoura is famous for. First thing we came across is this large ray. They are very inquisitive, not to be feared. Stay away from the big barb on its tail. This is what does the damage. Sean is on the hunt. Jackson, my son, has picked up these massive kinners. They're much bigger than North Island kinners. The kelp bed is home to lots of fish. Target species in a place like this are butterfish, blue cod and blue mochi. Butterfish will hide under the kelp, but will pop out if not threatened. Sean soon finds a butterfish that is slow to take refuge back under the kelp. They make great eating. They're very plentiful in most areas. Sean continues to hunt. He spots this blue mochi, which soon falls prey to another great shot. Stoning a fish like this means less chance of a big predator becoming attracted to you. Jackson is on the craze. Once he grabs a horn, he takes his time to slide his hand further down before pulling it from its hole. Best to get it this time. With all the silt stirred up, finding its hole again would be quite hard a second time around. Crayfish is on the menu tonight. A quick check under its tail for eggs. This one's okay. Look at these lunker powers. There's a meal in each one on its own. This is great country for them. Lots of feed. A quick swipe with my hand has it off the rock easily. They have to measure 125 millimetre across the longest part of the shell. This one is easily that. Sean has found a ledge of craze. Note how he makes sure his gloves are fitted properly before he goes into battle. These crays are well out of their hole as night is approaching. They wander around and feed in the dark. This is a good time of day to hunt them.
Sean's in for the smash and grab. Two crays in his first go is not bad for someone who never free dives. Jacko's on the powers. He uses the swipe technique. If you touch a power before you try this, it will clamp down and you won't get it off. There are special tools available to lever them off the rocks. Don't use a knife, they tend to damage the meat. If you have to release it, it could mean the power may bleed to death. Three powers, three people fed. Right, so um, we've done a bit of diving in the last two years, but I've never um, been able to free dive. And um, Darren's been kind enough to take me to uh, one of his uh, spots in Kaikoura. We're only a couple of hundred metres off the uh, main beach and uh, managed to spare a butterfish, which is um, just fantastic. I've never done that before. And uh, good sized crayfish, and um, you'll see hanging on to the end of that um, par that uh, we really struggled to get around this size, around uh, Banks Peninsula, this is about 180 centimetres, so well within the legal limits, so um, that's not a bad day. I think I'll uh, enjoy having a beer and eating that tonight. Sean, the, the first time free diver and spear fisherman, done a lot of scuba. On one dive he came up with two crays in his hand. There were so many crays under one ledge. I think because it's getting late in the day, they're all coming out of their cracks. And they'll probably start to walk around now. You know, if we stayed out a bit longer, we'd probably find some walking on the bottom. But quite a few of them were coming right out of their holes. It was just beautiful. There's just crayfish everywhere, power everywhere. Kaikura, a great spot to come and dive. Coming up, we head out to fish some really deep water. Was up at the crack of dawn to head out for a spot of deep water fishing. The area known as the Kaikoura Canyons drops away really deep, really quickly. Well, good morning. Now we've come back out off Kaikoura in Seamus Charters with Pete, and we've come out, we're fishing water between 240 and maybe even 400 metres deep. So these electric reels that we bought are really going to prove their worth today. Because I tell you what, some guys have been winding up manually and they're all saying, I wish I had an electric reel. Although pretty ugly looking, ling are great eating both fresh and smoked. So what you got here is what they, they commonly call a ling. Okay, and it's another one of the fish that you find in very, very deep water. I think you were down about 300 there, weren't you? Yeah. So at about 300 metres of water, there's things like that swimming around. It was over 400. 400? <laughs> the batteries we use on our electric reels are deep cycle 12 volt and will last all day without charging. 14. It's got plenty of weight now. Yeah. And someone else's line as well. Well, Chris just had his first drop and he said he got hit about 20 metres from the bottom and he's picked up two of these. These are actually called Ray's Bream. And interestingly, uh, there's some big fish that actually like eating these. One of them is uh, broadbill. So in an area like this, in, in places like Portugal, they actually use these for live baits for broadbill. And also, a lot of my mates who fish um, down off Wakatani have found a lot of yellowfin have eaten these as well. So very popular food fish, and these are actually pretty good eating for a deep water fish. Really neat looking things. Well done Chris. They're beautiful. 
Well, I was just dropping this one down. We're at about 240 metres, and I actually got a bite at about uh, 200. The line just took off, and I hooked the fish straight away, so I didn't even get to the bottom. Um, the boys are saying these raised bream are hitting about 20 metres off the bottom, so it could be one of those. But uh, yeah, you just never know, eh? I didn't expect that. Took me by surprise, it's like stray lining. Well, this one's been nodding like a snapper the whole way up. It's just about here. It's just, I really like the, uh, the unknown factor of this sort of fishing. We're just about in that five metres where the line will stop. Here we go. What have we got? Yep. Raised bream, I think. Yep, it is. Double. Oh, that's not a bad one. Well, you know, we don't catch a lot of this sort of thing, but the boys got it dead right. It hit on the way down, and it's another raised bream. And uh, the talk around the boat is these are really good eating as well. Most deep water fish and cold water fish are particularly good eating. So we'll put this one in the chili bin. Well, we've come back from two half days fishing with Pete on Seamus Charters. We caught a real huge variety of fish, Pete. Is that, that the norm for around yeah, here? Yeah, pretty normal, pretty normal. Most of our uh, fish, blue cod and perch, uh, the odd trumpeter. Yep. A little bit of grover from time to time. Yeah, and we ran some, some lures for albacore, so occasionally get albacore. Yeah, sometimes you get albacore, um, mainly north of Kaikoura, and yep. usually about five or six miles off. Okay, so you're running like a, a party boat, you take groups? Uh, yeah, mainly group bookings, um, up to 20 people. Yep. Uh, nice group on the boats, probably around the 12 mark. Oh yeah, good for, numbers. Uh, for kingfishers, yeah. Yeah, oh, yep. cool, cool. And um, this is all part of the service, filleting and preparing yeah, the catch? Yeah, filleting, filleting all the catch at the end of the day, and we bag it up. The biggest thing is to remember to bring along the chilli bin. Yeah, yeah, keep the fish nice and cool and yep. chilled. Yeah, plenty of good. ice, plenty yep. of ice. Now this perch is pretty tasty, we tried a bit last night, you know, um, a lot of people sort of throw them all back, but there's nothing wrong with them, is there? Oh no, definitely not, yeah. definitely not. Yeah, we try and keep all the perch, um, as long as they're a reasonable size, yep. is a big thing. Now what, what's the best time of year to come out with you? Uh, fishing in Kaikoura, basically um, September through till May. Yep. Um, it varies up and down, sometimes yep. the cod are, are better at different times, yep. but most of the time you, you still get a good feed. Yeah, and what about the groper? When, when uh, they... Groper, usually about this time of year, yep. February, March. February, March, yep. cool. Yep. Now, um, we pulled up a couple of pots and got a few crayfish, is that the norm for the charters? Yeah, we do, um, we do some pots each charter, yep. and uh, bait them the day before, yep. and then whatever we get in the pots, up to our, our legal limits. Yep. For, is what you get to take home. So everyone goes away with a few fish and a, and a crayfish. Yeah, crayfish if they're lucky. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a pretty good Depending day out. Depending on the catch. Yeah, yep. That's a pretty good day out. Well, I enjoyed it and I thought you uh, offered us a great service. And what do you reckon on the electric reels? They're pretty good, aren't they? Oh, awesome. Hey? Yeah. Special. Everyone should have one. <laughs>